In the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, there is only war. This is the slogan of Game Workshop's Warhammer 40k sci-fi universe. The Warhammer 40k universe is set at the end of the 41st and the start of the 42nd millennia. While this fictional universe is inhabited by countless factions, some human and some non-human, the main protagonist is the Imperium of Man. This is a vast, galaxy-spanning human civilization ruled by the God Emperor and besieged by countless threats, such as aliens, traitors, and demons. In order to defend its vast domain, the Imperium of Man employs armies equipped with vast numbers of highly advanced, and some not quite so highly advanced, vehicles. One of these vehicles is the huge Mercarius Heavy Tank. Welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Daniel, and today I will be covering the fictional Mercarius Tank. If you like what we do and want to see more, please consider hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. If you are already subscribed, hit the like button to claim your free cookie. If you'd like to contribute more directly, please consider donating to our Patreon or PayPal. It allows us to continue to make content of this standard. Given the nature of the Warhammer 40k setting, a history spanning over 40 millennia, things are often described as being lost or forgotten. The Macarius tank is one of those things. It is described as having been used in the distant past, but because of cataclysmic events, simply forgotten. Its design and construction methods were lost in the vast and sometimes abandoned archives of many distant forge worlds, worlds involved in the production of various types of equipment, spaceships, military vehicles, and weapons, spread across the universe. On the forge world of Lucius, in search of old technologies long since lost, Magos, a word for engineer, Narlax, came across fragments of a heavy tank. After years of painstaking research, he managed to gather all of the available information, which allowed him to reconstruct the long-forgotten heavy tank. He then went to the main forge world of Mars to petition the High Fabricator General, the highest authority of all forge worlds, for this new design to be formally accepted. Unfortunately for Magos Narlax, he never lived to see the final verdict of his petition, as the whole acceptance process took over 200 years. After years of testing and tedious discussions, this tank was approved for production, and received the name Macarius, in honour of one of the greatest generals of the Imperial Guard, Lord Commander Solar Macarius. At the same time the production of the Macarius was approved, Forge World Lucius received the STC, Standard Template Construct, which refers to a computer possessing the necessary schematics on how to build certain technologies for the production of the massive Baneblade Super Heavy tank. It appeared as though the work of the Magos Narlax would be forgotten, but due to the huge demand for weapons and the slow production of the Baneblade, it was decided that the Macarius would be put into service anyway. The Macarius was initially supplied to the newly created Death Corps of Krieg regiments which specialised in siege and attrition warfare. It was later supplied to various units spread across the galaxy as well. The real-life inspiration of the Macarius, as well as most other Imperial Guard vehicles, consists of vehicles from the First and Second World War, with the hull and suspension units being taken from the first, and the armament and turret design coming from the second. The Macarius's hull is divided into several different compartments. There is the rear engine compartment, central fighting compartment with the turret on top, front driver's compartment, and the two large suspension compartments. The Macarius is constructed using a combination of welded and bolted armour plates. The superstructure of the Macarius occupies a large portion of the tank's centre and rear, partly extending over the rear parts of the tracks. While most parts of the Macarius' armour plates are flat, a portion of the front superstructure armour plate above the driver's compartment is at a 45 degree angle. While the flat armour provides less protection than the angled armour of the same thickness, it was necessary in order to increase the internal space needed for the ammunition, equipment 
and large crew. The driver's compartment is placed on the vehicle's right front side. This compartment has a simple box shape with a small cupola placed on top. In front of the cupola is a single piece hatch with an observation port. On its left side, a firing point armed with heavy stubbers is placed. The weapons mount has a small gun sight and a large armoured periscope. And while the driver's side view is partially blocked by the suspension and track frame, the top observation points provide a limited field of vision to the sides. The Macarius is powered by a V18 engine that can run on any type of fuel, the fuel being stored in two large tanks placed on either side of the engine, while additional fuel can be carried in two horizontally mounted fuel drums at the rear of the vehicle. The overall driving performance of this tank is astoundingly poor, especially considering it's built so far into the future. Its maximum speed is a mere 26 kilometers an hour, or 16 miles an hour, and its off-road speed is a shocking 18 kilometers an hour, or 11 miles an hour. There is no information about its operational range, and the engine can only be accessed either through a two-part hatch, or a large single-piece metal plate with the ventilation grill on the top of the engine compartment. The engine is only equipped with two large exhaust pipes. The Macarius's suspension and track frame are completely enclosed by armoured shields. This overall design is heavily inspired by the British tanks of the First World War. The suspension consists of nine road wheels and an unknown number of return rollers. The drive sprockets are likely located to the rear, while at the front there is an idler with a track tension screw. The tracks are completely exposed to enemy fire, and can therefore be easily destroyed leading to the vehicle's immediate immobilisation. The Macarius's turret is more or less based on that of the Panzer II tank, albeit with considerably larger guns. The Macarius's turret is hexagonal in shape, with a round commander's cupola placed on the right side. The rear armour plate is slightly angled, and the front side plates narrow toward the gun mantlet. The gun mantlet itself is surrounded by two highly curved plates on both sides, Above the gun mantlet, a movable armoured plate serves to provide additional protection when the guns are in a level position, and the turret's top armour is mostly flat, with slightly curves towards the gun. The main armament of the Macarius consists of twin-linked large battle cannons located in the turret. These are 120mm smoothbore cannons that fire armour-piercing high-explosive rounds. With this armament, the Macarius is well suited to dealing with enemy armour, as well as large concentrations of infantry. The total ammunition load for these two guns is 40 rounds. The turret can rotate 360 degrees, while the main armament can elevate by 28 degrees and depress by only 2 degrees. The Macarius's secondary weapons consist of two hull-positioned heavy stubbers, with two more placed on the sponson mounts on the hull sides. Heavy stubbers are essentially equivalent to modern day machine guns, and operate the same way. The weapon mount is protected with a round shield that rotates as the stubbers move. The firing arc of the side sponson mounts is 20 degrees to 130 degrees, and the traverse appears to be around minus 10 degrees to plus 10 degrees. This unusual firing arc prevents these guns from firing directly forward. The gunners observe their targets through small vision ports. To the rear of the sponson mounts, there is a large square-shaped hatch. The sponson weapons can be replaced with either two heavy flamers or two heavy bolters. Heavy bolters are enlarged machine guns that are especially designed to fire rocket-propelled and mass-reactive 2.5cm shells, simply known as bolts. The hardened tip is capable of penetrating most infantry armour and light vehicles, obliterating the target with its explosive charge from within. The heavy flamer is an enlarged flamethrower with an extended range and increased destructive potency. The ammunition for the secondary weapons consists of 1000 rounds for heavy stubbers, or 600 rounds for heavy bolters. The overall turret armour of the Macarius is 220mm, or 8.7 inches thick, while the gun mantlet is 150mm, or 5.9 inches thick. The superstructure is 200mm or 7.9 inches thick, and the hull 
150mm or 5.9 inches thick. This overall armour thickness, together with the bolter construction, is not very impressive for a vehicle produced in the far future. Its strength most likely relies on the materials used in the construction of its armour plates. They are probably made using futuristic materials that are extremely resistant to heat, ballistic impacts, and other things that armour is expected to withstand. As a result of its immense size, the Macarius needs a large crew to operate it. In the turret, the commander, gunner, and two loaders are positioned. In the hull are the driver, the commander. As a result of its immense size, the Macarius needs a large crew to operate it. In the turret, the commander, gunner, and two loaders are positioned. In the hull are the driver, comms operator, or radio operator, and two more gunners. The comms operator is tasked with operating the hull positioned stubbers. The hull gunners each operate a sponson weapon on the hull sides. It is highly likely that the Macarius has a number of targeting, communication, and other cogitators, a fancy 40k word for computer, to help the crew better operate the vehicle. The Macarius's first major use in combat was during the 17 year long Siege of Vrax, capital city of the planet Vrax Prime. The Imperial authorities were overrun by insurgents who then proceeded to plunder the enormous war material storage depots present on the planet. Vrax was reinforced with many trenches, minefields, bunkers, and other defensive systems. The Imperium responded by sending in the 88th Siege Army to retake the planet. Composed of units taken from the planet of Krieg, which were specialised in siege warfare. The subsequent battle lasted 17 years, leading to approximately a dozen million deaths, and the complete destruction of Vrax Prime. The Macarius was used in this operation by the 88th Siege Army, and provided the Imperials with strong fire support. Thanks to its long tracks, it was capable of crossing many of the trenches that covered the killing fields of Vrax. Following the end of this campaign, the Macarius was slowly distributed to various other Imperial armoured formations. The Macarius has several variants, one of which is a specially designed anti-tank version, the Macarius Vanquisher. It is named after its improved main armament, the twin-linked Vanquisher cannons. These cannons fire special anti-tank ammunition at high velocity. Another variant of the standard Macarius tank is the Macarius Vulcan. Like the Vanquisher, its name derives from its main armament, the six-barreled Vulcan Megabolter. Two of these are mounted in the turret. They are able to deliver over a thousand rounds per minute, and are excellent at destroying enemy infantry formations and lightly armoured targets. In order to accommodate the extra ammunition needed, the crew had to be reduced to six crew members. The Macarius Omega, unlike the previously mentioned variants, has a number of design modifications. In order to accommodate its new, and ridiculously powerful gun, the Omega Pattern Plasma Blast Gun, but this weapon, while prone to malfunction and self-detonation, creates a supreme heat that melts the armour of its victims with no trouble at all. In order to house this truly gargantuan weapon, it was placed in a new, open-topped fighting compartment at the rear of the vehicle, most likely inspired by German self-propelled guns from World War II, such as the Vesp. The Praetor armoured assault launcher is equivalent to a modern-day multiple-launch rocket system. It uses the chassis of the Macarius tank with a front-mounted fighting compartment, with two front weapon mounts. To the rear, a large rocket launcher can be raised or lowered under armour. The vehicle can be equipped with different types of missiles, such as anti-vehicle, anti-air, etc., depending on what is required. While the Macarius looks intimidating, the creators of this vehicle took inspiration from the historical tanks and kitbashed them together without much consideration for how its overall design would function. On the other hand, it fits perfectly into the Imperial Guard's overall aesthetics and logic. For the Imperial Guard, advanced weapons are rare, while less advanced weapons are used in stupendous numbers. The Guard often employs simple tactics, counting on an overwhelming force of men, armour and artillery to tear through any kind of resistance, but not without a huge cost of life and war materials. In the grim darkness of your bedroom, there are only tanks. This concludes another Tank Encyclopedia voice article. Thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Remember to aggressively debate your favourite far future tanks and armoured vehicles in the comments section. Keep us in your sights.